All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and I am going over the PowerPoint presentations for Murox ASP.NET with C Sharp 2015 6th edition. And I'm working my way, all right, through talking about Chapter 7, the validation controls. I did go back and very quickly clean this up so it looks a little bit nicer, kind of in the format that I've been using. And right now, this looks like this. And it's fine the way it is. It's just fine. I mean, I can come back here if I want to and clean it up and put some page breaks and whatever. I'm not going to do any of that stuff. Not page breaks, uh, line breaks. I'm going to just leave it the way that it is. But it's time to start adding some stuff here. All right? Such as, Jeff. Okay, what I want to do first is I want to come out and I want to add, what do we have here? We have... One, two, three, four, five fields. And we're going to say every field is required. Okay? So I'm going to come into my source. And I'm going to start dragging out some validators. All right, let me close this. So just the validators are open. So I'm going to put in a required field validator. And I'm going to add one. In fact, we're going to add it here. It's going to look a little weird for a second. Whoops. So, home, I'm going to add this in as another row, which is the way I should do this. That's not what I want to do. There we go. That's what I want to do. All right. So, I've added another validator here. This is going to look a little strange for a couple minutes, but if you can bear with me, hopefully at least, you'll think it's worth your while. All right, so this will become required field validator name. And the message will be name is required. All right, we're going to just leave it like that. I'm doing this very simplistically. Now I'm going to start copying this. So this is going to look a little weird when I copy it and move it down just for a couple minutes. All right, so this will be required field validator password. And this will say password is required. All right, that's fine. Um, all right. And we'll come down into the next one here, and we'll put that in again. And this will be re-enter password. And this will say re-enter password is required. Right. We'll have another one here, and this will say salary, and this will say salary is required. I'm by no means going to be finished when I get done with this. All right, and finally, this is for phone. I'll call it phone number, that's fine. And this will say phone number is required all right I want to do a couple more things to each one of these okay starting from the top so I want to say here control oops control to validate equals and it's going to be text box name And CSS class is equal to error. All right. Now, I'm going to actually copy those to each one of these, although I'll have to change these every time. But that's okay. So this will be txt password. Text box password. All right. 
this will be text box re-enter password. Okay. This will be text box salary. All right. This will be text box phone number. Now, again, I did that unbelievably quickly. Okay, so now I have added my validators. Let's save it, let's run it, and let's see if I run this. I let errors, doggone it. The name text box one does not exist in the current con. This is the same goofy messages I've been getting all along. Thought that I. Oh, I don't have that in there anymore. So let's just comment that out. Okay, let's see if we can get this to work. It's not going to look very pretty. Got an unable to find control text box password referenced by this. So somehow I goofed something up. To me, this is the fun part of teaching. Doing something on the fly like this, knowing that I can very easily screw it up, but ideally that by you watching me work with this, you'll be like, oh, wow, I, I see what he's doing. And that's what it's all about. All right, so source code mode. Didn't like the password. Text box. Ah, there we go. Let's see if it, let's see if that fixed it. Ideally, what's going to happen here is it's going to come up. Now, when I click Submit, I'm going to get all my error messages because all those fields are required. There we go. So what I just showed you, what I just showed you right there, okay, what I just showed you was how to do the required field validator. What do I mean? Well, for each one of these, you saw it before your very eyes, with each one of these, I added, stop the run here, a required field validator. I needed an ID for it, the run at equal server, an error message I wanted to come up, the control I wanted to associate it with, and the CSS class I was using. So that's the first one. Now, when we look at this, what other validators do we have? So I showed you required field. How about compare? All right. So what I want, whoops, what I want to be able to do here, I don't want to do that. What I want to be able to do here is I want to be able to compare password with re-enter password, okay? So I'm going to end up having for the re-enter password, I'm going to have another validator, okay? I want this to line up and look halfway decent. So with what I'm doing, it may look a little bit goofy for now, and you'll have to, for lack of better words, trust me, okay? But I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add another row into my name here and there's going to be nothing in it but a blank space all right and I'm doing this for consistency sake because I want I want this to, to, to look good for lack of better words all right so there's the password I'm not going to put anything in there either I am going to put a different thing in here in my I don't want this all right, so what I want to drag into my re-enter password, what I want to drag into there is I want to come back in my validation, I want to compare validator. So that's going to be put right there. And I'll have to clean it up. So the ID will be compare validator, re-enter password. All right, again, run at equal server. The error message will be password and re-enter password must match. All right. There's going to be more I have to add in here. Whoops. And I'll put it in in just a moment. I can literally steal this. So my, my uh, control to validate is now here and my CSS class. I don't remember if I do the control to validate if I do that like this. 
So let's go back and check. There's my other one. You see it right there. And these are just blank. Okay? All right. I've got to go back into source mode here. Now we can do this from design mode. We'll click on this. Let's go over to our window here. And error messages, etc. So this is our compare validator. Control to compare. I want to compare the re-enter password, and I want to validate that with the password. That's how I'm checking to make sure those two are identical to one another. Let's go back to our source because now it added some more code in here for us. I want to clean that up so it looks nice and pretty. So there's our control to compare and our control to validate. All right. Oops. So let's see by putting that in and going back here. Hopefully I didn't make any errors. We'll find out quickly. Again, there's my error messages. But notice now if I put, I'm going to type in hello here. H-E-L-L-O. And here I'm going to type in hell. Okay? So notice now I get my password and re-enter passwords must match. If I put that as an O and tab, now my error messages went away. So it's all working. So how did I get my compare validator to work? Again, you watched me do it. Instead of a required v validator, I used a compare validator. And what I had to put in here was the control I wanted to compare, which was the re-enter password, and the control I wanted to validate it with, which was my first password. So I've now shown you the compare validator. All right. Well, let's look, let's go on, and let's go to salary. All right. And for the salary, let's do a range validator. All right. So I'm going to put in another TD right here for our salary. Right here. And I'm going to drag in, let's stop our run. Should always be doing that, but I'm not. Uh, range validator. Okay, so there that is. Again, I want to clean it up. So we'll call this range validator salary. And we're giving them names like that in case we want to use those in code later. All right, so run at equal server, error message, and we're going to say salary must be between 50,000 and 100,000. I'm making those values up. They mean nothing. All right, let's go back to our design mode. And now what I want to do in here is I want to find my minimum and my maximum. So my maximum will be 100,000. And my minimum will be 50,000. And notice they've got my message in there already. But I also have to say the type, not a string. We'll make this a currency value. Okay? So that's what should be coming up. Salary must be between there. You can see that it's not red. What does that mean? Well, we need our control to validate in here, as we've been doing. So we need our control to validate. So we just added for our salary, there's our error message. So we want here control to validate equal text box, what is it, text box salary? Is that right? Text box salary, correct. And CSS class equal error. All right, so now we've got that one in there. So let's look. Now this, I don't care anymore about those required fields, so I'm just going to put garbage in there, okay? 
All right, so you see all that. Click Submit. There's my required. Now let's put in one. Salary must be between 50000 and one hundred. So let's put in 100000 Okay, it took it. Let's put in $100,000 and one cent. And it comes back. That's all good. This is all working. So how did we do our range validator? How did we do our range validator? Again, you just saw it. We had an ID, a run ad, an error message, the control to validate, the CSS class. We also needed our maximum value, our minimum value, and the type that we were comparing. So you've now seen required field, compare, and you've seen uh, a range validator. Okay? Now let's go down to the phone number. And for that one, let's stop our run again. For that one, let's put in a regular expression validator. This one is a little different, as am I. So this will be required expression validator phone number. Run at is server. Error message is, we'll just put in invalid or missing phone number. All right, again, we're going to say control to validate equals text box phone number, CSS class equal error. All right, so we've got just about everything we need, not quite, but we've got to come in here and looking in here, we've got everything set up except the actual pattern that we're going to use, and I don't remember what that is. So let me look in here. It's validation expression. All right. Now there is a way to do this to bring up the regular expression dialog box. I don't remember what it is, though. So I'm going to put this in myself. All right. And hopefully I'm going to do it correct. In fact, I might, might be able to grab it from in here. That's the pattern I want. So can I grab it from here? Um, that's what I want here. I'm trying to see if it's going to let me grab this. Oh, that would be great if it does. Validation expression equals. Good deal. All right. We'll find out whether or not I made any mistakes right now. Again, I don't care about my other ones here. No phone number. Oh, the salary was wrong. Oh, that's right. Uh, 55555. Five, 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 five. Phone number is required. That's good. But let's put it in a bad format. 333 uh, 4444. Three, four. And it took it. Which might mean I put in an, an invalid expression in there. Doggone it. I'm going to have to go back and show you this. But what I wanted to quickly do was to run through the major types of validation with you. All right, when I come back, I'm going to switch back to the, um, I'm going to switch back to the PowerPoints and go over in the book what we just went over in here. Now, hopefully what I've just done, and I did it quickly, and I did it off the top of my head, as you saw, but hopefully it made at least some sense to you. That's my hope. All right, so I'll be back in just a couple.